Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 8 in Going 2D. Today we're going to take a look at creating some GUI that will allow us to restart the game. We will also just fix a couple of bugs. We are actually getting pretty close to finishing the game up and being able to export it. So um, not a lot of videos to go. So let's just get started with today's video. So first up, open up Unity as always. Cool, so first we're going to look at a bug that has been annoying quite a few people. And that is the ball, uh, ball sometimes slowing down when colliding with the top of the players. Um, even though the bounciness is set to uh, 1 and the friction to 0, the ball can still slow down at times. So I've written some okay code uh, to fix it. Um, it's basically just uh, patching things up. Uh, it's not the best practice, um, but the alternative would be to uh, ride the ball collision uh, completely from ground up. And I think that's just too much for this video. Uh, so today we're just going to implement the code I came up with, which is a uh, pretty basic um, setup. Cool, so first off, open up the ballcontrol.javascript file. And let me just zoom in on the text here. And then we're going to make an update function. So just right below the function start, create an function update. And open up the brackets there. And in here, we will just do var xvel for x velocity of type float equals rigid body 2d where the first r here is just non capitalized dot velocity dot x so we're just storing our uh, x velocity the movement speed on the x axis into a float variable so we can just reference it throughout then we're going to say if this x velocity is smaller than, and I'm going to say 18 here, uh, you can go ahead and change this. It's going to depend on the speed you set the ball off with. Uh, the ball speed up here, you don't set that directly. You set that using add force, uh, which, ba which basically means that Instead of changing the velocity directly down here, we use the add force function. So that um, we, if we add the force of 100 here, it won't actually tr uh, travel with a x velocity of 100. So you're going to have to just figure that out yourself. And I can just quickly show you a, a pretty easy way to monitor your ball's velocity. And we simply go debug.log velocity and then just plus the x vel there so now when we save this and head back into unity uh, we get an error here unknown identifier oops I missed a d there 2d cool so now when we hit into unity and hit play we can see in the console uh, that it will output the velocity of our ball. And we can see here that the ball uh, currently lies around the uh, 19 uh, or minus 19 when it switches. Uh, so I think that 18 will be a pretty good value to say that if it's less than 18, we will bump up the velocity a bit. You don't want to do this constantly because that can mess with collision and stuff. So just leave a bit of a barrier there uh, that it has to cross before we change the velocity. Cool. Um, so now we can do if xvel is smaller than 18 and make two and signs xvel is bigger than minus 18 and last one xvel is not equal to zero because it's going to be equal to zero when we are resetting the ball and we don't want it to just fly out or conflict here when resetting the ball. 
Cool. So now inside of this if statement, we are going to write another if statement where we're going to figure out if it's traveling to the right or to the left. So now we say if xvel is bigger than zero, open up some brackets. And then in here, we are ready to add the uh, velocity. So we just do rigid body. And here we need to add the velocity directly to the rigid body. And we can't just change this value because that wouldn't actually apply to the rigid body. So we need to do rigid body 2D dot, whoops, 2D dot, oh, that's annoying, dot velocity dot x equals 20. And again, that's just something you're going to have to play around with. Else. Rigid body 2D dot velocity dot x equals minus 20. So we're just going to boost it in the other direction. So basically what our code does now is it first off stores our currently uh, x velocity as a float variable. Then it checks if we are traveling between 18 and minus 18 uh, in uh, either to the right or to the left and it checks if we are standing still. And if we are not standing still and are between the 18 and minus 18 values, it's going to check whether or not we're tra traveling to the right or to the left and then apply velocity in the direction we are traveling. Cool. Uh, so now what we can do is we can just monitor what it's doing by adding debug.log. So now we can simply say debug.log uh, velocity uh, before plus x velocity x vel here and then close that off and then also a debug.log saying velocity after plus and then just rigid body 2d dot velocity dot x I'm just going to do a small b there. Cool. So basically what will happen now is we will add the velocity and then it will say what it was before and what it's, uh, it has now been changed to, just so you can follow along in what it's doing behind, this, uh, behind the scene. So now we can clear off the console here. And uh, just to touch, test out if this is working, we can uh, select our ball bounce and we can uh, try to bump down uh, the bounciness a little bit but right now my inspector is stuck here so hopefully it will just sometimes I have some issues while uh, Dropbox is syncing and it's it's pretty normal see if we can get it to select there cool so select our, our bounciness and simply change this to something like 0 0.8 and now in the console we will be able to monitor what's going on there and we can see that it changed it changes itself uh, actually not what right now it sets the before to the same as the after that shouldn't be happening let's just see what's going on here okay so i figured out what our problem was uh, the code was actually working but i forgot to put the debug.logs inside of the if statement here so they were constantly being called which they shouldn't be. So now if we just put them in here and make some space for them there, uh, we should see this working correctly. So now when we hit play, clear off all our console logs here, we can see that the velocity changes from 15.9 to 20 every time it hits. So that will just allow it to um, that will just force it to have the right velocity at all times. Cool, so now that that is done, uh, we can set the bounciness back up. We can clear the console here. And if you don't want the debugging, uh, you can simply just comment those out by selecting them, right-clicking, and hit toggle line comments. Great, so let's save this and hit back into Unity. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to add a reset button. 
and we're gonna do this using a custom skin I've made, which I'm gonna show you in a sec. Let's first set up the code for the game manager. So select the GM object, select the game manager script, and double click it to open it up in Mono Develop. Now here we're gonna scroll down to the function on GUI, and then we're gonna make some space, and we're gonna type in if GUI.button, and then open up some parentheses and say new rect, and open that up, and we're gonna do screen dot width divided by two minus Let's do 121 divided by 2. And uh, the reason, actually, let me just show you this before we go into all of this. So just do screen dot width divided by 2, comma, uh, then we're going to do 35, and uh, comma, 121, comma, 53. And these values are all very specific. But that's because uh, I've made a image that fits these values. So I'm going to show that in a sec. Then we're going to write reset with capital letters. And we're going to close it off. And then open up some, uh, some brackets there. And then we're going to just leave it empty in here. So now when we save this out, uh, I'm just going to quickly show you why I've selected exactly those values. And the reason why is that they fit the image I've, the images I've made. So if we go uh, ahead and close down Unity here and go to the 2D Assets Pack, which you can get from brackies.com. Let's open this up. We can see that we now have a new folder called GUI. And if we go under this and then under Button, we have three states of a button here. Uh, the normal, the hover, and the pressed. And uh, this all looks really weird because it's uh, on a white background. But if we just select all of them and drag them into Unity, we can set them up. So select all three and then change the texture type to GUI and hit apply. So now what we can do is we can insert this into our score skin. But first, let's just make sure that they are positioned exactly how we want them. So if we just select the button normal here, we can see that it's 121 by uh, 53 pixels. So if we go into unit, uh, back into Mano Develop, we can see that I've set the width to 121 and the height to 53. And then because when we are using screen.width, remember that it uses the anchor point in the top left uh, corner here. So we need to center this in the middle of the GUI. So we are going to subtract subtract half of its uh, its width. So we're going to do minus 121 divided by 2. Cool. So now when we head back into Unity, it will position it exactly in the center. And also something I've noticed is that our um, font here is not correctly centered. Um, or it wasn't before at least, before it says mine, uh, said minus 13, I've just gone ahead and changed this to minus 18. That's a bit closer to the exact center. Cool. So now we can just go ahead and uh, add in the skin here. So the score skin, select that one, and then uh, open up the button section. And then under normal, we can select a custom texture and we're going to do button normal. Then under hover, we're going to do button hover. And then under active, we're going to do button pressed. Then we're going to change the text uh, color for, for the normal and the hover to being completely black. The active, we're just going to leave that as is. Then we're going to change the font to, I would like Arial, but you can just mess around with that and the font size to something like 24. So now we are actually ready to go ahead and watch our button in action. So now when we hit play, we can see that we have a button that is correctly centered called reset, and we can press this and uh, it will switch between the normal hover and press states correctly. Cool. So now we just need to add some simple logic in order for uh, making it reset. So we're just going to do inside of the if statement, we're going to do player score one 
equals zero. Oops, that's play score. We need player score and player score two equals zero. And then we're gonna do uh, a game object dot find to find the ball and send a message uh, to make it reset. And we could do the game object dot find here, but that would be pretty taxing because then it would have to do it every time we hit the reset button. So instead we can go ahead and make a function where it will store uh, the uh, ball as a variable. So let's just do function start. And then in here we can store it as a variable. So let's make a variable for, variable for it called var the ball of type transform and uh, close it off there. And then under the function start, we can do uh, the ball equals game object dot find. And uh, let's do game object dot find game object with tag. And then we're going to do ball. And uh, let's just do dot transform and close it off. So we're just setting uh, the uh, ball as the uh, variable here. So now when we save this, let's just go back into Unity and remember to tag the ball correctly. So let's go to tag and change it to add tag, then write ball, and then let's just select it there. Awesome. Now we go back into the code and under the player score, we simply say the ball dot game object dot send message and then we are going to do reset ball is the name of the function uh, of course you need to change it if you've called it something else and then let's close it off so now it will tell uh, it will in the function start when the game starts it will store the ball as a variable as a transform and then it will go down here when we press the reset button and it will send a message to the game object that the reset button uh, function or the reset ball function should be called. So now when we go ahead and maximize and hit play, we have a button that will reset our game. So let's just see if we uh, change the score a bit here and then hit reset. The ball jumps back into place and the score resets. So that's basically it for this video. Uh, in the next one, I think we're going to go ahead and do some exporting, uh, but maybe I'll find something else to do. Let's see. Um, but the series is uh, pretty much coming to an, uh, to an end soon. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.